Hi everyone, I'm JP Moses, Director of Awesome here at Real Estate Mogul, and I have my good buddy, my friend, my pal, my chum, my compadre, in real life, not just on the interwebs, Mr. Corey Boatwright with me. How are you, buddy? What's going on, JP? I have invited Corey to join me to share with me and to share with all of us some stuff he's been working on with another of our uh, esteemed advisors, Mr. Doug O. Uh, these two guys have are both of them are well known for being mindset mavericks. They really have a lot to offer when it comes to developing the inner game stuff that you need in order to succeed. And they both have achieved a great levels of success in their own rights and um and they're they're guys worth emulating. So I said, Corey, Mr. Boatwright, Frank and Boat, join me and share some of what you guys have been cultivating. Uh, and so I don't know what we would call these, maybe uh, 10 success secrets or um, 10 ingredients to the sauce of ridiculous awesomeness that is Corey B. I don't know. Some, <laughs> some fun name we'll come up with and, and, and apply to this. But really what matters is the content. So uh, I think what we'll do is probably break this up into a part one and part two. Um, let's take the first five of these 10 things and process through them right now. So that, what's the first one? Basically, some things I was thinking about, which you and I were going over, is you know what are some things that set apart this kind of a successful mindset compared to um, some people that you may know that this may not be you, but someone you may know that lives in kind of this victim mentality where they deal with these different challenges and they kind of feel like, woe is me and why is this happening to me and all of those kind of things. And there's these different kind of mindset of these different tweaks and, and, and shifts that uh, I think it's good for perspective on uh, someone to, to use. So I wanted to come up with um, some things that were applicable that you could use right away. So the first thing is a successful mindset really thinks about creating deadlines, not backup plans. There is this sense of you need to get it done quickly from an entrepreneurial standpoint. We're dealing with things, you know, especially as, as real estate investors, we deal with things uh, all the time. We have the minutia of the day and it's easy to set these backup plans. Well, it is somewhere between 80 and 90% that tomorrow, whenever you say tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll get it done tomorrow, or you have this backup plan, most of the time that never comes. We use the backup plan as a safety kind of measure in our mind because then we can kind of move on to that next thing. Well, entrepreneurs and successful people that I have recognized in my life, they create deadlines. So what I want you to do is think of one thing right now. Think of one thing that you want to get done in the next week, okay? And I want you to put a deadline on it in your calendar. If it's going to be tomorrow, get it, set it for tomorrow. If it's going to be Thursday, set it for Thursday. If it's, but if you need to get this thing done within the next week, you need to set a deadline to it. Don't just think about it. Don't put up this back plan, backup plan that sometime, you know, you'll get to it. But go and put a deadline to it and put a time to it when you're going to get that thing done. Here's what will happen is that you will find yourself like pushing things aside to get that one thing done. So that's one of the first things, JP, is that you want to create deadlines, not backup plans. So by backup plan, what you mean is, uh, I guess, basically planning to fail. Yeah, almost like excuses in a way. You know, I mean, these are these kind of excuses of where I can get it done tomorrow or whatever. But if you make a deadline, you you know, you want to get that thing done as quick as possible. And you've all of a sudden got a deadline. It's on your calendar. It becomes real. What would you say to someone who says, all right, I'm going to put a deadline in place and a backup plan? I mean, you can, but most of the time it's, it's not necessary. If you just put a, a deadline in place, then you'll start thinking about that, not your backup plan. The, the main thing is, is think about when you can get that thing done. And when you have it set like that, a deadline, that's when you'll find yourself doing it. If backup plans, they never happen usually. Yeah. You know, and I can think of even, um, a small way that this has crept into my reality. I, I key, I use, uh, Workflowy for my daily to-do list, and 
I'm not going to go into the details on why I love workflow for my daily task list, but one of the cool things about it is you can tag things for like, for example, what day of the week you want to have it done. You can kind of use it to set deadlines given a day of the week that you, that you want to slot that for. But the stuff that I don't put a day of the week on and I just put ASAP. Now, what does ASAP mean? ASAP, as soon as possible. And yet to me, it doesn't have a date on it. So what it means is keep pushing it off. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> so, so I've found that if I actually force myself to take that thing that keeps getting pushed off and pushed off and pushed off, I don't want to forget about it. Obviously, I want to get it done. But if I slot it, then nothing else can push it out of the way. And it actually miraculously has a way of happening. Yeah, it's it's easy to do that. It's funny you say that ASAP is a way to push it off. <laughs> All right, so create deadlines, not backup plans. Yes. All number right. Two. Yeah, number two. So start quickly and finish strong. You know, sometimes it's easy to be a quick starter. In fact, you know, there's a fantastic program that I recommend everybody go and take. Um, it's a test, actually. It's called the Kobe test. Anybody that I work with, anybody on our team, they have taken the Kobe test. And what this Kobe test is, it shows your cognitive functionalities, the things that you're actually going to do compared to things that you think you're good at, things that you're good at compared to things you think you're good at. And a lot of us are quick starters, but we don't finish strong, okay? And that is a big issue. You know, that's a that's a big issue. What I found is to be successful, you need to start quickly, but you also need to finish strong. You need to finish what it is that you have started. And if this is not a part of your cognitive strength, this is not something you're naturally good at or something that you're this is your strength, then you need to have somebody on your team that will finish strong for you. But to be successful to and have a business where you can scale, you need to start quick and you need to be able to finish strong. I love that you've included both of those. You have the speed of implementation, you know, which is a huge, uh, hugely important concept. That's the start quick. The finish strong. I, I got to be honest. That's where I that's where I struggle a lot. Uh, and I think you said that you have the same Achilles heel. It reminds me of general contractors on a rehab. They have a great way of starting quick. They get in there and do all the demo, and it's really impressive. But that last 10% doesn't quite seem to finish strong most of the time. <laughs> yes. I hate to compare myself to the most frustrating, agonizing part of being a rehabber, but... That's true. Yeah, it's absolutely true. You know, it's easy to start things because there's so many different things we get in our... You know, you get this shiny object uh, syndrome and you want to do a lot of things because you're capable of doing them. You know, I'm capable of doing this. So I'm going to start it. I'm capable of doing this because I'm going to start it. The challenge is to ask yourself the second question, which is what we don't do. We ask ourselves the first question, you know, yes, I can I get that done? Can I start that? Am I able to start that next business, that MLM business or that uh, that other thing that's going to possibly bring money in my life or, you know, is this other business that can um, give me a little more freedom in my life, give me more time. You can, but the challenge you need, the next question you need to ask yourself is, can you finish strong? You know, can you finish what you start? And a lot of us, if we're honest, we would say no, you know, or we're not going to finish it. Yeah, it sounds exciting right now, but I'm probably going to start that. And that thing is just going to get about 30% and it's going to dangle there. And if that's you, understand that that's very common, but you need to have somebody on your team that can finish strong. 